Let's see what we've got for you today. Oh, some exponential word problems. Nice. This first one says you deposit $2,000 in an account paying 1% interest compounded annually. And we want to know how much money will be in the account in five years. So, with these types of problems, there are two different equations that you could be using. The top equation is if the account interest is compounded annually. The bottom one is if it's compounded continuously. <clears throat> so as you see, our interest in this problem is compounded annually, so we're going to use the top equation. Now we just need to go through and figure out what each of the letters are and what they mean. It says you deposit $2,000. That is your P. P is always the initial amount, so we've got $2,000 right there. Interest rate, 1%. You always turn that into a decimal, so R is 0 0.01. And T, the time, is 5 years. What we're looking for is how much, which is the letter A. That A is always the final amount. We want to know the final amount of this account in five years. So when you plug all of these numbers in <clears throat> and throw that into your calculator, you get $2,102.02. Now let's look, take a look at the same scenario, except we're going to compound the interest continuously this time. So if you read the problem, you will notice that the interest is compounded continuously. That will tell you which of the two formulas you need to use. It's the PERT one. Just as before, the initial amount is 2000 the interest rate is 1%, and we want to know how much is going to be in the account in five years. So you just plug in the numbers for these letters, throw it into your calculator, and you get $2,102.54, which is just a tiny bit more than what we got when it was compounded annually. Now we're going to spice things up a little bit. We want to know how much money you have to deposit now into an account paying 5% interest compounded annually in order to have $1,000 in three years. So the compounded annually tells you exactly which formula you need to use. But now it's a little bit different of a setup. We want to know how much money we have to deposit now. The initial amount is the letter P. Before, we knew what P was, but now we don't. 5% interest, so the R is 0 0.05. And we want to have $1,000 in three years. So the T is going to be 3, and the final amount is actually $1,000, because that's what you want to have in 3 years. So if you plug all of these numbers in for the corresponding letters, P is the only variable left, and that's what we're going to be looking for. Now we've got 1,000 equals P times 1.05 cubed. So P times that number, just divide that number out. Type that into your calculator, and you get P is $863.84. All right, it's getting tougher now. What is the doubling time of an account with 4% interest compounded continuously? The easy part is usually figuring out which formula you need to use. You see compounded continuously? It's the PERT one. That's where we're at right now. Interest rate, 4%. Okay, we can figure out what R is. It's 0 0.04. But that's it. We don't really have any other numbers. But there kind of are some numbers. What is the doubling time? So T, that's what we want to look for. Now, doubling time, what does that mean? That means that if you have $100 in the account, we want to figure out the time it takes for that $100 to go to $200. Or if you add $500 in the account, the amount of time it would take to go to $1,000. It doesn't matter what your initial amount is, as long as your final amount is twice that. So I usually pick 100 for the initial amount, and then the final amount for doubling time is just going to be twice that. 
So plug all of those numbers in, leave t as t because that's what we're trying to figure out. And now we need to solve for t. Now when you're solving for something that's up in the exponent, we're going to need to use natural logs. But before you can do that, divide out that 100. Because the 100 does not have t as the exponent, so we should get it to the other side. This is what you come up with. Now to solve for t, take natural logs of both sides of the equation. Natural log and e are inverses, so the ln and the e cancel each other out, and this is what you end up with. Now just divide both sides by 0 0.04, and there's your t, 17.34 years. Now here are three different problems I want you to work on. Go ahead and pause the video so you can write these down.